It is time for Streetwise with former chief of the New York City Sheriff's Department, former chief of the Seagate Police Department, retired New York City detective, Time Warner Public Access Media Award, Joe Franklin Super Excellence in Broadcasting Memory Lane Award, New York Veteran Police Association Streetwise Productions, host of Streetwise, Mr. Lou Tarano. Good evening and uh, welcome back to uh, Streetwise. Uh, I'm just hanging in there a moment, uh, waiting for my guest, but until the comes on. He uh, has a little uh, issue, and uh, he'll be calling again in a moment. Uh, but if you want to listen and uh, watch this show, uh, it'll definitely be on YouTube later on uh, after the show and on Strong Island uh, TV at uh, right here on Long Island. Of course, you can watch Streetwise. So, uh, uh, look, I'm going to talk about a couple of things before my, my guests uh calls in, and we were going to discuss something new, something different, something that you haven't heard about in quite a while, and that's uh, Donald Trump. So anyway, uh, I wanted to talk to my guest who's in a, a well-known uh, political analysis, African-American gentleman that he's been on uh, in many of the uh, talk shows, and he's a uh, he analyzes what's going on in, in the country and, 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 and especially the uh, perspective uh, in regard to the black community. But I don't know what happened to him. Uh, there were Murdoch. Uh, we were supposed to discuss uh, a bunch of things. Oh, my God. He's calling me on myself. <laughs> what do we do? Can you call on the station number? That's... No, no, it's the... Uh, the, yeah, the, the station number. Yes, correct. All righty. Okay, thanks. Uh, no, just call. Just call. I already introduced you, but just call in. Yeah. Yes, thank you. He said he was trying. Does he have the right number? We don't have the... Give me the number, 945-9099. Yeah. We haven't, I haven't received anything. Are we on now? Or we, did you cut it off? We're on. Yeah. We're on. Well, you and I are talking, so people are going to see us on the YouTube having a conversation. Jason, my <laughs> yes. chief engineer. Okay. Yes, chief. Yes, chief. Uh, uh, listen, my, my guess, uh, Dewey Murray, there is having a little problem. So try to bear with us, and uh, he's, uh, he should call. And I don't know. In fact, he just called me on my uh, cell phone, and I, I don't want to lose him because we have so many interesting things to talk about, you know. So. Uh, <laughs> Don't know what happened. He's still trying to call in, uh, Jason. Um, okay. We could try. No. Folks, bearing which, yeah, what happens, you know, in the uh, in this uh, in this world of uh, technology. So uh, I, I don't want to uh, don't want to lose him. So uh, he's he's calling me now. We're just trying to make a connection. But I do want to talk about some of the things in, in regard to the. Uh, the black community and the black perspective in regard to Donald Trump, because you know he's been they've been calling him a racist. Uh, obviously, they went into collusion, and now uh, they're talking about uh, Turkey and uh, you know and Syria and uh, the impeachment. Obviously, is uh, one of the things they want to talk about, and they want to enforce. I don't know why. Folks, please hang in, and uh, this is an interesting show, and I really don't want to uh, don't want to lose my guess. Okay. Oh well. Okay, folks. I, I guess I'm going to have to uh, see what happens because he's been trying. He's been trying to call in, and I don't know. He's having technical problems. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some of the things that are going on. Uh, in New York, until my guest comes on. This is the first time in history I've seen law enforcement suing law enforcement. You got uh, the Tish James, who's the New York State Attorney General, suing ICE. So, uh, you know, ICE because they're, they're locking up uh, criminal aliens in, in different locations. So she's suing them. That's never happened before. So... Uh, uh, I, I got to get to my guest. I don't know why he's calling me. I hate to do this, especially on uh, we're going to be on the, on the YouTube. And 
if you're listening, my guess, it's uh, 516-945-9099. So that's correct. My chief engineer, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. He's calling me. And he's trying to get through. So uh, I got to apologize. I, I, I don't want to talk about other things until he gets through. And I just don't know what what's going on there. And uh, it's, just, it's a little embarrassing, I guess, to, to do a show. And my guest is trying to call in and I'm trying to pick it up and he cannot get through. So... Uh, I don't even want to introduce him until until he calls in, folks. That's how important this guest is. You know, I was going to touch on some of the different things uh, that's going on in the city, and I was going to do that after my guest uh, had, uh, you know, after I finished interviewing him. But I guess I'll have to start talking about it now until he until he he reaches reaches us. I, I don't know why uh, he's not getting through. But anyway. I was talking about Tish James. Tish James is the uh, the new New York State Attorney General. Well, she's supposed to represent law enforcement. She's supposed to represent the victims and the people and taxpayers and citizens of the, of the city and state of uh, New York. So what she did, uh, she filed a suit. And by the way, who, who else joined the suit with her against ICE? Uh, in regard to locking up illegal criminal aliens, is the Kings County, that's Brooklyn, District Attorney, uh, Eric Gonzalez. So you have two law enforcement, high-ranking officials suing a law enforcement agency. It's it, it just, folks, I, I, I keep repetition. I say mind-boggling, but it's mind-boggling because they're angry that we are... I say we, we, the government, ICE, uh, immigration enforcement uh, is locking up criminal aliens. It's just, uh, I, I don't know where we're going with this. This is the first time and we we're, we're, we're seem to be, uh, and especially the Democrats. By the way, they are, they are Democrats. They're on a Democratic uh, line. And so, speaking of uh, Democrats... You know, uh, one of their uh, one of their candidates had uh, Betro, Betro, uh, who was running for uh, on the uh, Democratic presidential primary, was asked a, a question uh, about the uh, what would he do uh, with the tax exempt status of churches and synagogues and any uh, house of uh, worship. Uh, and we got to their uh, tax, tax-free, uh, not-for-profit uh, benefit that they get if they don't recognize same-sex marriage. And he said he would discontinue it. Do you imagine that? So how do you, you know, you imagine St. Patrick's Cathedral uh, having exempting, taking away their... their uh, Tax-free, not-for-profit status because they they uh, refuse to uh, conduct same-sex marriages. Now, <laughs> it's a, in, in fact, uh, I'm not connected to. Uh, well, obviously, I do go to church, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, same-sex marriage is a sin. You know, the Bible starts off with Adam and Eve, not Adam and Adam, or even Mary. So, but, uh, but that's another story, as they say. But obviously, I don't care what people do. You know, uh, but how do you expect the church or synagogue, a shul, or a Protestant mission to uh, conduct uh, same-sex marriages? It's against the religion. You know, it's like telling them, especially uh, Christian and Orthodox. Uh, Jews, uh, we're not going to contribute and we're not going to support you if you don't support abortion. That's exactly what that's exactly what they're saying. This is the democratic ideology today. You know, it's bad enough they're going socialism. It's bad enough they're, they're being outright communist. Now they're, uh, but I have on Twitter, if you look at it, I'm saying they're attacking God. They're so desperate that they're attacking religion. These 
liberal Democrats. Uh, it, it's just and and they want to be want to be president of the United States of America. Uh, so uh, those are those are issues, on the, and they are concerned. And uh, folks, I hate to interrupt this great conversation that I'm having with myself, but I do have to get my guest on. He's an important gentleman, and uh, and uh, I don't know what's the, why he's having uh, some kind of issues, but he is. And I want to talk with him about some important issues and concerns about the uh, this political race that we're having for 220 with uh, Donald Trump and whomever on the Democratic line uh, runs against him. So and it's an, he's an important guest, but he is having some, uh, I guess, some difficulties electronically, I guess, uh, trying to reach the station. But I know because he is sending me out on my iPhone trying to get through and for whatever reason, I'm not sure what the, what it is. Okay, so I'll jump back to New York City, which is a uh, pretty uh, uh, a, a topic. And uh, uh, you know, if you, you've heard this, and if you've seen it, and uh, a lot of the politicians, and usually Democrats, and most times it is Democrats, in in regard to uh, prison reform. One of the things they think prison reform is going to do in New York City is closing Rikers Island. Now, you close Rikers Island. What do we do with these people? Let them out? So I think, and I say this, and I've said this on social media, the people that are supporting closing Rikers Island, they actually don't care whether these, these people go or incarcerated, and uh, they're, they're really not, con not concerned about it. So uh, anyway, it's... If we close the if we close Rikers Island, they're talking about opening up a jail in every borough in the city of New York. I don't I don't know if these people are around. Maybe they weren't born, but that's the way up the New York City prison system was originally uh, you know, when it originated. I should say in the five boroughs of the city of New York, we had a jail in every single borough. But it was an eyesore. It was a problem. So. Uh, the same political people who are speaking now, the same party, said, look, we've got to get the jails out of our communities. Uh, I'll give you an example. The Bronx Jail was next to Yankee Stadium. So a visiting house was in the evening. So when there were night games at the visiting house for the prison, the Bronx House of Detention for men, uh, people coming out of night games going to their cars or trying to or, or parking their cars to go to a night game in Yankee Stadium were being mugged, folks even raped and assaulted by families and friends of visitors who are visiting the inmates in the, in the prison. Because what do you think? Do you think these are, uh, uh, how do I say this? They're not great people. Certain groups are just bad people, and their family and relatives are the same. So these are the people that were roaming that part of the Bronx. So what did they do? They closed it. They closed, they closed the jail. They closed the one in Brooklyn, because it was in Brooklyn Heights, which is a nice, a nice area, still is a nice affluent area, because they were doing the same thing in Brooklyn Heights. So, and they start disrupting uh, Queens Boulevard and the jail that was in Queens, Queens House of Detention. So uh, it was a great thought, great idea. Centralize, centralize all the criminals that commit crimes and put them on an island. And, and they did. They put them on Rikers Island. So now they're saying it's, uh, it's a terrible, terrible place. So I think my guest is calling in now. So uh, are you on the air, my... Uh, oh, okay. Have your guest I'm trying to. Why, yeah, I'm trying to have my guest call back. I, I, this is going to be an interesting show. I'm, I, I am calling my guest, by the way, because uh, I'm trying to get him to uh, call back, and I don't know what's going on, and the studio is telling me, call him back, and I am trying to call him back, and they're right. And I really, you know, I just, he, he's just an important guest, and I don't, want to, I don't want to miss him. And by the way, my guest, you've seen on uh, Hannity, you've seen him on Tucker, uh, the Ingram, uh, Laura Ingram, um, you've seen him on on so many different uh, talk shows, and uh, it was uh, 
I was glad to be able to to grab him, and I'm still trying to grab him, you know. And uh, I I really, folks, I don't know what's uh, what's going on, and I, I am trying to call him. And look, I'm I'm on the air now, trying to reach him. I, I don't know if uh, if can if he can hear me, but uh, I don't know. Uh, but he's calling me, trying to get on. I, Jason, my chief engineer. I, I don't know. Do we have a problem with our phone system here or something? You know, Hello? is uh, I, I really uh, yeah. hmm. okay. So I'm gonna just continue what I'm talking about because some of these things that uh, let me, let me that uh, okay. Now the, the people. Keep, keep, keep your right down, there's no route. Give them a call. Okay, uh, hang on, folks. Yes, I'm uh, going to try to go uh, call my guest so he can call in. I just, uh, you know, once in a while this happens. It does happen in radio. It happens in television. And uh, and it, it can happen, and it's happening right now. So you, uh, <laughs> you're you watching it. You're watching it live. You're going to watch it tonight on the YouTube. So, uh, and right now I'm live on Facebook. And uh, if, if you could see me on the screen, uh, I'm turning red. You know, because <laughs> that's that's not Strong Island uh, Radio or Strong Island TV at Paradise Studio. It's me turning red because, believe me, I am a little embarrassed. In fact, I'm a lot embarrassed trying to uh, reach my guests. And he's trying to reach me, and I'm trying to reach him. And uh, I, I really, uh, again, uh, really don't know what uh, what happened. So... Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to keep talking about what I was talking about because I am angry about these do-gooders and liberals. They, they keep yelling, close Rikers Island because it's inhuman, uh, inhuman conditions. But what do you want to do with people that do inhuman things to other people? You know? What do we do with them? So uh, Here? I, I think my guest is on the line now. Is, uh, hello? Uh, yes. Hello. This is Lou Tolano hello, yes. from Streetwise. Hi. I'm <laughs> okay. How are you? You know, uh, uh, my nickname was Tonto years ago, and now I'm all red because I'm really talking to my audience, and I'm uh, a little embarrassed now. And they understand that we were just having some technical difficulties. Uh, yeah, and a little trouble getting 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 the lines connected here, unfortunately. Oh yeah, well, well that's what I was saying. It is, Things the, 20, happen. It is the 21st century, after all. Uh, ab- absolutely. So, uh, but folks, uh, I'm sorry you missed the intro, uh, my guess, but I want to tell you by. Who, who uh, my, my guess is, folks, he's a, uh, you've seen him on uh, pretty much in all the talk shows, uh, but he is a, he's a great political analysis. He's a, a Fox News contributor. He's, uh, he's with the uh, contributing editor with the uh, National Review. It's a pleasure to introduce, and I'm going to reintroduce him because I mentioned his name before, Deroy Murdoch. Deroy, welcome to Streetwise. It's great to be with you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to see if we can get the volume a little higher here in, in the uh, studio. All right. Okay. So you, you, your, your question to me was, and I'm going to say it on the air, right after the show is over, folks, you can catch the show. Uh, you can also catch the embarrassing moments of mine uh, before I introduce my, my great guest on the YouTube. We're live right now on Facebook, uh, Roy Murdoch. And... Uh, I just want to say a couple of things, Deroy, and then uh, you run with it, you know. Okay. Uh, we're, uh, we're going to talk about something new, something that nobody's talked about for quite a while, that we haven't heard for quite a while. We're going to talk about Donald Trump. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a very esoteric topic, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it is, and you're a great analysis and expert on it. But it, it, in, the, in tonight's show... Uh, you touched on it on other shows. I want to talk about the uh, allegations of uh, of racism towards uh, Donald Trump. But before you answer, I just uh, we we do know right now while we're speaking, uh, Donald Trump has 40 percent. Correct me if I'm wrong. Of the uh, it seems like the uh, African uh, American support. We know about. Uh, we've been saying it over and over again. How uh, this the lowest unemployment for African-Americans in years. Uh, but a couple of things that are important that to me, and I talked about I know you spoke about it, and uh, when I had uh, Alveda King, Martin Luther King Jr. 
niece on my show. And Donald Trump doesn't get credit for this. After I mentioned that you can run with it and run with anything else that Donald Trump has, has achieved, and he has achieved a lot, uh, is that we had an African-American president, folks, which we know, and we had him two times. And, and we had Bush and we had Clinton. It took Donald Trump to, to make uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's Jr. burial site a national historic site. He's done so much, and, uh, but, but we're not talking about the good things, uh, Troy, of, of what Donald Trump has done and what he achieved, and 90% of the press are not disclosing it, plus they're against, uh, against him. Uh, from where you sit, what, what's going on? Well, what I think you have going on on this issue, Lou, is uh, an ongoing cover-up on the part of the uh, so-called mainstream media, liberal media, when it comes to the good things that President Trump has done for blacks, for Hispanics, for Jews, etc. Uh, he repeatedly does things, some of them just as a matter of happenstance because of his uh, overall policy proposals, but some specific things that, he, that he's done that are very much of a benefit to those populations, demographic groups, whatever you want to say. Uh, and the media do, do the very best, best job they can of keeping this quiet because they don't mm. want people to hear about this. So, for example, you mentioned the uh, unemployment rate for black Americans, uh, currently, I believe it's 5.5. I don't have the numbers in front of me just a second, but uh, that is the lowest figure in American history, lowest number ever. Same for uh, Hispanic uh, unemployment. Black poverty and Hispanic poverty are at their lowest levels ever recorded, while at the same time the overall um, unemployment level is 5.5%. Which is, excuse me, forgive me, 3.5, 3.5%, which is the lowest uh, we've had uh, in this country, I believe, since uh, 1969, mm. lowest in 50 years. Uh, you, hear very, you don't hear very much about uh, these very positive black figures. Um, this is, of course, part of the overall benefit of lower taxes and deregulation and the pro market uh, stances he's taken. Um, as for specific things he's done, for example, he gave a uh, 30 minute uh, speech at the about a month ago at the historically back black colleges and universities conference in Washington, mm. D.C. Uh, he pointed out that he opened up an office, I think in his first month as president, opened an office in the White House to um, offer whatever help it could to the 101 historically black colleges and universities in America, like Howard University, uh, Spelman, Morehouse, and others. Uh, these schools begged Obama for eight years and said, Mr. Obama, would you please? Let us let our students use Pell Grants for summer school. A lot of these kids at these schools, for whatever reason, go to summer school. Pell Grants normally were only available for the fall and spring semesters. And so they begged Obama, please make them applicable to summer school. Yeah. Obama didn't do a thing about it for eight years. In under two years, uh, President Trump, in fact, said, fine, you want them for summer school, you got them, which is a huge benefit to kids at historically black colleges and universities. Um, there are several school and historically black colleges and universities in the New Orleans area, which were devastated by Hurricane Katrina. Uh, he basically um, waved a magic wand, and their debt to the federal government went away. That's a huge benefit to them to help them get back on their feet. They're still suffering since Hurricane Katrina. Uh, and uh, there's been a real effort on the part of the president to get NASA to recruit among those schools for kids interested in uh, careers in space exploration. He worked with several corporations to get them to offer apprenticeships to kids at, at, at those schools. Uh, none of that was covered by the nightly news programs that evening. Absolutely zero. No mention of this whatsoever. Um, then you move on to the area of criminal justice reform. Yeah. Uh, you've heard even groups on the left, like Black Lives Matter, complain about uh, mass incarceration. Uh, they begged Obama to do something about this. He didn't do a thing about this. Mm. And guess what happened? President Trump, in I think December of last year, just before the end of right around Christmas time or so, uh, signed the first step act, step act designed to help uh, a lot of these uh, folks who've been locked up for nonviolent uh, drug-related crimes. Not all of them black, but a disproportionate number of them black. Uh, get out of prison if they've been nonviolent, go back home and try to get their lives back together. That's been a huge benefit to uh, a lot of black folks who've been locked up, uh, as I say, many of them for nonviolent offenses, and they're going back to their communities and trying to get their lives back together. If President Trump were a racist, he would not make any effort. He wouldn't lift mm. a pinky to help black people in prison. Uh, and uh, these are the sorts of things that have gone on. Uh, you mentioned the um, Martin Luther King, uh, uh, his burial site. Yeah. Uh, eight years, Obama could have made it a national monument, a national historical place. Yeah. He didn't do that. President uh, Trump did. He also signed a um, 
a pardon uh, for uh, Jack Johnson, the black boxer who about yes. 1900, 1905 uh -huh. was wrapped up in a very elaborate case involving uh, white women and sexual allegations and all this stuff. Uh, he pardoned him. Again, Obama had eight years to do that. He didn't, couldn't be bothered. So over and over and over and over again, and there are other examples you've seen, uh, school choice. School choice has been uh, wonderful about talking, about talking about school choice and increasing school choice mm -hmm. options for, for Americans, many of whom are black parents who wish their kids actually could get educated. Um, these are the sorts of things that Donald J. Trump has done for black Americans. The left-wing media don't want people to hear about this because they just want to say he's a racist, yeah. he's a Klansman, he's probably a Nazi. Some people say worse than Hitler. And we talk about this sort of thing, um, and you present these facts, you talk about these actual policies that he has pursued, uh, those lies begin to crumble. So rather than yeah. let the lies crumble and let the truth emerge, what the left-wing media do is uh, report on other stories like uh, kids who get lunch-shamed, um, uh, husband and wife who are climbing mountains uh, up in one in the uh, other side of the planet, one on this side of the planet. Um, the uh, NBC Nightly News did a story rather than cover any of the things we're talking, I'm talking to you about, uh, they did a two-and-a-half-minute story on the 25th anniversary of the movie The Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. So they'll do anything and cover any other story rather than spend any time to give the President of the United States any credit or even just a brief mention in passing about any of this sort of stuff. I think it's shameful. They know exactly what they're doing. And by not giving people a sense that, okay, this president is, in fact, trying to give a, a fair shot to uh, black folks, they'd rather have people think that he's a Klansman, he hates our country, and that leads to more hatred, tension, social strife, and division, and the mainstream media are doing their very best to tear this country in half. They should be deeply ashamed of themselves and deeply ashamed of the media malpractice, which they engage on a daily basis. But the way my... Uh Right. Why are they? Why are they doing that? What? 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 Pers what gain are they going to get? Like we talked about, ninety percent uh, of the press in regard to Donald Trump is is negative, and they won't disclose any of the things that you touched on, which is so many in the short time that it, that he's been in, he's been in office. So, uh, what's what is their motive? Do they want it? Are they looking to destroy this country? Are they looking to incite a, a civil war? It, it just it's mind boggling. They're not. These are not stupid people. And, and yet, for some reason, they are holding back the good things, and it's just negativity. I, is it power? Is it money? Yet, it's just hard to uh, touch on it. Uh, they know exactly what they're doing. These these aren't people who are you know high school kids who don't know very much about journalism. These are people with degrees in journalism. Yeah, college graduates. Some of them have, have uh, master's degrees. Some of them probably have PhDs. They know ex exactly and deliberately. And they know exactly what they're doing. And they're doing it deliberately and advisedly. And the reason they hate Donald J. Trump's guts, they hate him with a passion and uncontrolled rage. I think a lot of them, frankly, very very specifically wish he were dead. Oh, I, I know. think if he passed away, I think these people would do cartwheels. I really sincerely believe that. And, uh, and they don't want to see him reelected. They want to see him uh, either defeated at the polls next November or even sooner than that, uh, removed uh, from office, impeached, or whatever the case is. And they don't want to, get, they want to give him as little credit and as little positive news as they can so that they can get the American people turned against him and get him out, out of office. Um, I, there was a study, I believe Harvard has done a study, yeah. taking a look at the uh, coverage he gets. And it's something like, I think the stories on, on him are like 92% negative. Yep. Now, I can understand, I'm not expecting the NBC Nightly News and World News Tonight to be cheerleaders waving pom-poms. Uh, you know, 50-50 might be too much to ask, but you think, mm. okay, 60-40, 70-30, 75-25. No, it's like 90-10. 90% of what they cover about this president is negative. 10% of it is positive or neutral. That is, uh, you know, those are the kind of odds you'd expect coming out of the Democrat National Committee, or out of right. Nancy Pelosi's office. And the, the left-wing media basically become offshoots of the, um, the House and Senate Democrat uh, cloakrooms and the Democrat National Committee. They want this man defeated, and they will do, do everything they can to, to accentuate uh, and exaggerate the bad news. Uh, first of all, cover up any the good, the good news, accentuate um, the negative news, and then even go beyond that and invent mm. things out of whole cloth, fabricate things, just come up with stuff that just is, is invented as, as invented as Thomas Edison's light bulb. This happened the very first day he was in office, the very yeah. first day uh, he went into the Oval Office after the inaugural parade. This is January 20th, uh, 2017. Time Magazine, uh, Time Magazine's uh, reporter uh, put out a story saying that uh, the President Trump had removed the bust of Dr. Martin Luther King from the Oval Office. No such thing happened. Now, he did retract the story. He apologized to his credit. But any other journalist would have said, gee, that's interesting. Uh, 
Madam Press Secretary, I guess uh, it was Mr. Press Secretary at the time, uh, please explain why is the uh, bust of MLK missing? And the Press Secretary would say, no, no, it's not missing. It's right here. Take a look. And the story wouldn't have run. Instead, okay, MLK bust is missing. This proves he's a Klansman. Let's run out with that story. It exploded in Time Magazine's face, and they had it back down. That was on his first day in office. Right. So they've, huh. had the, they've had the machetes out from this man from when he had his hand on the Bible and said, so help me God, and even before that. And it hasn't stopped. It's just getting worse. Dang and nice. I, as a journalist, am disgusted with what, I, with what I see on a daily basis. I see them breaking basic rules of journalism that I learned in high school, uh, on my high school paper, probably even on my junior high school paper. Mm. Uh, I've seen I've seen eighth and ninth graders write more credible stories than what I see uh, coming Absolutely. out of the so-called uh, ma- mainstream uh, uh, papers or paper records and so on. But I, I like what you said, the way uh, on, uh, on other shows is that. Because of this and what they're doing, they're going to destroy themselves. Can you art- articulate what in regard when you said that they're going to they who we know who they are, the uh, mm-hmm. the news media and and the Democratic politicians. Uh, I'm I'm hoping you're correct, and and uh, I shouldn't say I'm hoping. I, I believe you are. They are going to it only is going to hurt themselves in, in the short mm-hmm. run. Correct. Yeah, uh, the way I describe it is that the, the uh, so many uh, in the media, not everybody, there are some exceptions, but boy, right. it's it's most of them these days. Uh, they behave like jihadists. They behave like people with suicide vests on, mm. and uh, like like somebody with uh, ISIS or Al Qaeda or yeah. um, Hamas, whatever it is. Uh, they're so filled with hate that they will blow themselves up and destroy themselves in order to take out the yeah. per- the, the target of their hatred. And this is what we see the media doing today. They are they're so uh, they're so completely enraged and embittered and hateful of Donald J. Trump, that they're destroying themselves in an effort to take him out. Um, and so you see, for example, the uh, media run out and say, oh, Michael J. Michael Cohen is attorney. Yeah. Um, uh, there was an effort by, by Trump to get Michael Cohen to uh, engage in perjury. Well, no, right. that didn't happen. Uh, and then we had uh, Brian Ross at ABC News rush out with a story that uh, Michael, uh, Michael Flynn, the former NSC chief, mm. was um, talking to the Russians and other foreign people before the election. And then it turned out, oops, sorry, it was actually after the election, which is exactly what you want the incoming NSC chief to do, to talk to a foreign leader so that he has rapport with them as of the first day in office. So he, had, he got that completely wrong. He, had, uh, he basically got fired from ABC from, from that. And on and on it goes, and you see these people making, making these errors on all sorts of stories. Um, they had one just uh, about two weeks ago when this whole Ukraine nonsense started. Yeah. Uh, they came out with a story in the Washington Post that, oh, the... Um, Director of National Intelligence uh, threatened to resign over this. About an hour later, he put out a statement saying, "I didn't. I, not only did I not threaten to resign over this, I've never threatened to resign over anything. I'm not a quitter, and I don't I don't intend to quit now." They blew that too. So anything they hear that they that they think will hurt the president, they they run they rush to print. They turn on the printing presses, hit send on their articles, um, put the uh, uh, put the broadcast waves through the uh, transmission towers. And run with this stuff at lights, at literally at the speed of light. When you're talking about broadcast, literally at the speed of light, before they sit down and check any facts, find out if anything is true. It's it's really vulgar and disgusting, and is tearing this country to pieces. Well, you know, he was right from day one when he uh, he he, he uh, coined the phrase uh, "fake news," and it, it is so real. It's just he mm-hmm. was right on target when he said that because, uh, and I, I have to believe because of the fake news. And uh, they're going to destroy themselves. And they have uh, the election is next year. We got a lot of time, and people are getting fed up. You know, they just keep the same. They regurgitating the same uh, exaggeration. And they, uh, uh, for example, Adam Schiff, which we know he's going to, he's heading this uh, uh, impeachment uh, hearing committee. He lied to Congress. Cir- is the he word lied to Congress. Why is he mm-hmm. locked up for lying to Congress like you and I would be if we lied before mm-hmm. Congress? You mm-hmm. and I would be in- arrested. Yeah, he, he read this supposed statement uh, in which President Trump said to the president of, of uh, Ukraine, I want you to uh, go back and, and uh, dig up dirt on Joe Biden uh, and uh, don't call me, I'll call you when I think you've, uh, you've delivered on my demands. Where's this way? He never said anything like that. Exactly. Absolutely. Schiff just invented this. He just sat there. Uh, as in his opening statement in front of the uh, House Intelligence Committee, yeah. and just read this supposed uh, statement from Trump, which was not true, and he got caught on it, and, and he said, "Oh, it was a parody. I was just trying to be funny." There's nothing funny about lying about the President of the United States at the beginning. Of what is an effort to remove him from office? Yeah, that's funny. Few things in public life could be any more deadly serious than that, and I don't think anybody's expecting Adam Adam Schiff to be some sort of a stand-up 
or in this case, sit down comedian. Um, <laughs> so he could have read from the transcript as is, but no, he had to go invent something and pretend that was true. Absolutely appalling, shameful, reprehensible behavior on the part of him and the Democrats and their errand boys and errand girls in the uh, so-called mainstream media. Yeah, shameful, sh- shameful is correct because where was this evidence that he said he had during the Mueller uh, inquiry uh, or investigation that Adam Schiff said, uh, well, I have all this evidence uh, of collusion between Donald Trump and Russia. Uh, why are we going through a coll- uh, this uh, impeachment uh, hearings where it's just produces evidence that he claims he has. Where, you know. You're right. He said that over and over and over on, on television and, yeah. and uh, in front of the microphones at um, uh, press conferences, on uh, network uh, interview programs. Uh, he had all this evidence, un- incontrovertible evidence, that Donald J. Trump engaged in collusion with Russia, et cetera, et cetera. I personally uh, emailed and called his office, yeah. I believe, about five or six times both emails and telephone calls saying, I would love to see this evidence. Please send it to me, yes. email it to me, call me and read it to me over the phone, whatever. I got no response. And I, at one point I said, I'm about to put in this article that I contacted you wow. five or six times. If you want me not to put that in the article, please get in touch and tell me what this evidence is. Even one piece of evidence, nothing, absolutely zilp. They don't have it. This man sat there and basically lied to the American people over and over and over again. Not about... Um, uh, you know, what Trump did on the weekend, or, you know, does he enjoy a cocktail? No, the deadly serious idea that yeah. the President of the United States is actually a KGB agent. This mm. is very, very serious stuff. And in the absence of any evidence of that lie, he went and lied about it over and over again, and then it turned out Robert Mueller, Mueller with the help, by the way, of a bunch of very left-wing pro-Hillary Clinton lawyers. He didn't have anybody on staff who was even remotely uh, neutral, much less positive about Trump. They found nothing. They found no evidence that the Trump, that President Trump or his campaign colluded with Russia after a two-year, two-and-a-half-year, $30 right. million dollar investigation. And after all that, um, Adam Schiff did not come up with the evidence. He could have said, well, Mueller didn't find it, but... Here's the stuff I found. No, nope, never did it. Just moved on. That's right. Okay, let's move on to Ukraine. Let's just you know, like a like a like a um, a snake slipping out of its old skin and leaving the old skin between a couple of rocks and slithering away. That's what Schiff did. He sort of slithered away from the Russia Gate skin, and now he's wearing a bright, beautiful, mm. shiny skin that says Ukraine Gate. That's probably as as um, sure as as fake or even more fake than this Russia Gate story, Russia Gate right. hoax. So I'm trying to figure out what's what's next now when when this pans out. Exactly uh, what happened with the Mueller and and the, the collusion and stuff that we're all we're going to country's going to find out it's all garbage. Uh, meanwhile, people are, are are actually saying, and I, that's why I believe what you're saying is that they're going to destroy themselves. What are they doing for the country? What is the Demo- what is the Democratic Congress? I'm going to use that term. What are they doing for Congress except yelling, impeach Donald Trump? That is their that's the only focus. So uh, I don't know yeah, how long they can do that. That's all they're so. doing. Uh, you yeah. know, the House, the Democrats regained the majority in the House saying that they would, uh, work, the moderates would work with the President Trump and they would work on prescription drug prices, they'd yeah. work on something related to guns and they'd focus on education and uh, helping out uh, old people with health insurance and on and on and mm. on. Uh, they've not done any of that. Uh, they have uh, focused completely on, um, on impeachment on hating this president, on endless hearings. And I know that there are people who voted Democrat thinking, okay, let, let's try to get something accomplished here. Right. And these people, I'm sure, are just sorely and deeply and bitterly disappointed that they put their faith in the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party, once again, has nothing to offer but uh, hatred yes. and division and strife. Uh, and then, God forbid, if they get into the White House uh, next year, socialism. This is what the Democrat Party is for today. This is not your father's Democrat Party. This is not your mother's Democrat Party. Definitely not. Uh, this is this is the party of hard, hardcore left wing uh, uh, tension and acrimony. And if you look at Antifa and these other people out in the streets, uh, violence and bloodshed. Shameful, shameful, shameful party. It, it, it is the party the was Democrats hijacked. It was uh, the Democratic Party was hijacked by the um, the left liberals, which wasn't that great, but now the left has been hijacked by, like you just mentioned, this socialism and and communism. To be realistic about it, that's where they are. There is no my parents uh, and even mine as a kid, my Democratic uh, Party when I was a, a young fellow, because we loved uh, stories about uh, FDR, Harry Truman, the Kennedys. We could keep it going, but that's yesterday, like you said. That uh-huh. is gone. Oh, People yeah. have to realize that. 
Uh-huh. So uh, no, it's. Uh, I mean, the, some of these people. Uh, there was a debate a couple of months ago where uh, the um, ten people, like well, at that time, it was probably about twenty. It's down yeah. to fifteen or eighteen, whatever. Uh, they were just re- repeatedly bashing Obama. So these people are the left of Obama, who is plenty left as it was. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, compared to these people, Obama is some kind of a moderate, which I never thought I'd say such a thing. And Joe Biden, who has a very, very liberal vote record in the U.S. Senate for his uh, 36 years in the Senate or whatever it was, uh, he's now considered the uh, representing the, the far right of the Democrat Party. Right. I never thought I'd live long enough to see Joe Biden represent the far right of the Democrat <laughs> well, Party. But I can here see we that. Are. <laughs> here we are. You're going to be around quite a while, but... Uh... I never thought I'd see it in, in, in my time. I've been a, obviously, people know I've been around quite a while. And, uh, but I want to talk about something that I've seen, and I, I was there. And this was 1986, uh, DeRoy Murdoch. 1986, I, I, you know, I was pretty much, for some reason, involved in uh, politics. And I was um, with uh, former Mayor Ed Koch during those years. And I think 19, yeah, about 1986, 1985. And I was privileged to be standing by a, uh, a conversation that uh, Donald Trump was having with, at that time, uh, Mayor Ed Koch. And they were talking about the Warman skating rink in Central Park. And, and you're a New York uh-huh. guy, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, uh-huh. uh, and there was a, a budget for $4.7 million, and they went way above it, went into $12 million. That was the, that was the result of the people that, Donald, that uh, Ed Koch had hired as commissioners. So, and he couldn't open the park, this, this, uh, this rink in Central Park, Warmans. But people don't realize, I was standing right there, and uh, Donald Trump, that's just 1986, he, his last, he never thought about it's going to be president 15, 20 years from, from that point. He said to Ed Koch, Ed, where are these kids going to go from Spanish Harlem and Harlem if we don't have that skating rink? And I tell people, I will take a polygraph to, to say what Donald Trump, I'm quoting Donald Trump, where are these kids from Spanish Harlem, Harlem going to go? This is where they go. This is they, they stay out of trouble. They come to the skating rink in Central Park. He said to Ed, get it done and give me the check. And I'm going to say this over and over again. This was 1986, and that's what Donald Trump said to Aid Koch, and that's why I'm shocked, uh, probably more than you, when they call this guy a racist. You know, I've seen it. I was there. And I'll mention as much as I can, and I do. And I, I love to tell that story because uh, here's a guy who's a multimillionaire or billionaire, whatever, and he's concerned about kids in Spanish Harlem and African American Harlem mm-hmm. at that time, uh, yeah. the right. So I love to tell that story because I was very easily, right there. He very easily could have avoided that issue and said, uh, "Hey, Ed, let's uh, uh, you know, let's go to the Four Seasons and have a lovely lunch and talk about art and music and the opera yeah. or whatever, and yes. and not worry about the, the the kids in Spanish Harlem or the black kids in Harlem or right. whatever. Not even not even you know break a sweat about that. And in fact, from what you're telling me, he was concerned about that enough to fix Woolman Rink, which is. You say the government was in charge and couldn't get it together. He took it over in a matter of months, was able to get the thing up and running. Yeah. How about that? Uh, and uh, he was, as you well know, he was on the front page of the New York Post pretty much like once a week when he was uh, here before he became president. Right. Uh, then he had The Apprentice for, I think it was 12 years or so, yeah. correct, on, on NBC, number they, one or number yeah, two, they loved two or three them. show in the country. Uh, this is a man who had cameras and microphones in his face nonstop for the better part of 30 years, yeah. okay? If this guy were a racist, somebody would have caught him uh, dropping the N-word or calling some Hispanic person an inappropriate name or uh, using uh, ugly language about Jews or something like that. Very true. And it would have been in the press, and they would have said, oh, my God, Donald Trump, look what he just said. Oh, he just dissed somebody, or he said something inappropriate or whatever. Uh, this has never came out. All mm. this time, this guy was living under the, the biggest mic- microscopes in the country, which is the members of the New York City press corps, and nobody ever reported anything. He was a fun guy. They loved having him on TV. They loved having him on the front page of the New York Post and the other other tabloids, not just the Post, but the other tabloids. Mm. And then every night on The Apprentice, every once a week, I should say, on The Apprentice for a dozen years or something like this, uh, with you know TV crews following him around and his staff and the makeup people and the sound people and the lighting people and, and on and on and on. And nobody ever said anything about him being a racist until he runs for president. Oh my God, this guy's a racist. He's, you know, <laughs> David Duke with a red tie. 
extraordinary. Uh, and the only uh, reason they say that is because that that's the, other than calling somebody a murderer or a rapist, the worst thing you can call somebody is racist. And so they've been throwing right, that right. at him nonstop for about three years now, going on four. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's a shame because the people that actually uh, how do we say, loved him or liked him or respected him prior to him uh, running for president, these same people dislike him. With it's just, uh, I've never seen it. Uh, the hatred, and he's, he really touched on it. If, God forbid, if he died, they would celebrate. It, it's just... I that's, have no doubt that would happen. It, it's no just, doubt. It is such a hatred, and I, I don't know. It's, is it, it, it's worse than cancer, because they all have it, you know? It's, uh, you know, I, I will tell you that um, as a conservative uh, as I am, and as I'm, I'm sure you are, um, we had very little good to say about Obama for eight years. He did a lot of things right. in terms of policy, which I hated. You know, Obamacare and mm. the Iran Nuke Deal and all kinds of spending and ridiculous programs. But never once in eight years did I, hear, did I ever see anybody do any depiction. I don't, cannot, cannot remember one time of a depiction of Obama with his head chopped off. Exactly. I've seen exactly. over and over and over again. I have a PowerPoint where I show this. I've got probably a dozen examples of artists and usually people who are pretty established in the art world uh, with these paintings and doctored photographs, and cartoons, and so forth, uh, even a mural down in California with uh, Donald Trump's head chopped off. Oh, it's sort of like a yep. decapitation chic, where they show the President of the United States with his head severed from his shoulders, not once or twice, but over and uh, over correct. and over and over. And these fantasies these people have about killing the President, cutting off his head, uh, Academy Award winning actor Robert De Niro saying it over, I want to go punch this guy punch in the face. Him, yeah, yeah. Uh, Corey Booker saying, I want to hit this guy in the face. I know. Um, uh, what's his name? Biden the other day saying, I want to beat him like a drum. I mean, and then we say, oh, he's such a bully. <laughs> he's so mean. And yet you've got the left over and over and over again, depicting the man being decapitated with his head chopped off. Nobody on the right ever did anything like that uh, vis-a-vis Obama for eight years. This guy's only been there less than three. And repeatedly we see these depictions of him being shot uh, had removed um, the New Yorker. The New Yorker. I mean, this is one of the most esteemed and respected publications in the English-speaking world. They had a, a cover story, a cover illustration rather, of uh, Trump coming down the staircase. He's fallen flat on his face. It's actually fairly clever, and his red tie is is sticking out in front of him, so it looks like his head is bleeding. Right. Unbelievable. And this is not some little you know wacky student publication. This is the New Yorker magazine on its cover. Well, it doesn't then, get any more establishment than that. Then the Congress, and I see this sort of thing over and over and over it, again. Don't end. Didn't the congresswoman just say what he should get the electric chair? It's, I yes. Just, so, uh, I, I was think that was Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters. Yeah. Somebody else. He sh- yeah. He should it's get just the electric confinement. But somebody did say the electric chair. It's just yeah. he should get the electric chair. You, you know, mm-hmm. if anyone did that to any other president years ago, the Secret Service oh. would be knocking on your door. The Secret Service would show up and come talk to you. That's exactly would, right. Exactly. And now, now what happens, you get probably a TV contract for that. Yes. It, it, it's just, uh, uh, but uh, again, I, I do believe, you know, what you said about uh, they're going to destroy themselves and that it, that happens and the history does show that. And uh, I, I don't know what they can do next. Uh, you know, what what are you hoping to see, the way uh, Murdoch, uh, to, uh, from this point on, as far as what's going on in this country and even other countries, you know. Yeah, well, a, c- a couple of things. Um, I, the thing I want to see most immediately is related to this business going on in Syria yeah. uh, with Turkey and all that. I think the most urgent thing the President of the United States can do right now mm. is figure out some way of, of uh, isolating, um, containing, and liquidating the ISIS prisoners. Yes. I am terrified that the, something like 900 of these guys escaped yesterday and... Um, these people are from the Middle East, but they're also from France, Germany, yeah. Holland, Belgium, some from the United States. And my, my absolutely morbid fear is these people are going to get on planes, uh, fly to the capitals of Western Europe, and then before long use the visa waiver program to hop on a plane, on planes to JFK, LAX, uh, Chicago, San Francisco, whatever it is, and come over here and return to jihad and, the, and, and get the blood spilling in the streets again. Uh, to this president's credit, the ISIS caliphate was the size of two New Jerseys. Mm. He shrunk it down to nothing. It disappeared completely because he unleashed the military and said, go take care of this uh, with the help of the Kurds who apparently were turning our backs on them, although now with sanctions of Turkey, maybe we're not. Uh, and they've had these 
ISIS guys in prison, which is great. Right. But they can escape from prison. They need to be, I don't know if it's a summary trial and execution or just bring in bombers and flatten them or drones or whatever. They yeah. need to be eliminated. These people to. can't go back from where they came. They can't be re- re-educated. They can't be rehabilitated. Uh, it's like saying, well, we'll just take out half the half of your cancer and leave the other half in. It'll be fine. Oh. No, it's not going to be fine. It's going to grow and kill you. So these people need to be eliminated. This needs to happen in the next probably 48 hours. Uh, this is the most, I think this is the most urgent pressing need of the, Amer- of the American public oh, I'm, policy I'm today. afraid they're just going to come um, through the border. They're just going to go, they could just walk over the border. That's Yeah, if they don't fly in, then yeah, come in, you know, yeah. land it, uh, take a plane to Mexico City and start walking. You that's know? all. Uh, I mean, that's... To the Mexican government's credit, they have reduced the number of people coming across great. That, that the border was great. by about 65%. That's great. But uh, that these was people great. are very determined, very focused. Uh, very tenacious, and God forbid, you know, all you need is one of them to come in uh, on his own and do something like uh, what we saw in uh, uh, San Bernardino with a bunch of people being gunned down. This guy on the West Side Highway who took a truck and drove over right. a bunch of people who were biking and jogging. That's um, right. Uh, Just... The um, I forget the name of the um, uh, military guy who was at uh, Fort Hood and opened fire and killed, I think it was 13 uh, American GIs. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot. It uh, doesn't take too many of these people to create a lot of a lot of destruction, no. mayhem, and bloodshed. So that needs to stop. Coming back home, I think the Ukrainian thing will fall apart. I just saw this afternoon afternoon that uh, Adam Schiff said, "Well, maybe we really don't need to have the whistleblower testify since we yeah. have the whistle since we have the transcript." Totally different story than we heard a couple of days ago that the whistleblower was this great uh, national hero who needs to be brought forth. And now they're saying, "Well, we don't need that person's testimony." Um, so I think this is unraveling. You just had the president of Ukraine last week say that um, he was not pressured, there was no pr- quid right. pro quo, he did not feel blackmailed. Um, he said he did, did not know that the military aid was postponed. He had no idea it was postponed, so not knowing the military aid was postponed, how could he feel the pressure that the left wants him to wants us to believe he felt? Uh, so I think the facts behind this are coming out. They do not support the idea that Trump did anything wrong. They do support the idea that the president behaved uh, appropriately and correctly on that phone call. Um, I think if that all gets out, the Ukraine story collapses, and the Democrats basically will have taken not one but two cream pies in the face, back to back. Yeah. And maybe at that point they'll say, well, you know, we've really, really blown it. We need to do something like pass the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement, uh, focus on other things that are actually going to make That's lives right. better for you and me and the people listening to our voices right which now. Congress should be, just, which Congress should be endless, doing. Endless uh, jihad against the yes, United States. Yes, absolutely. We uh, we have a lot to be concerned about, and we need we need President Trump right now. We need him for the next uh, six years, I guess, or close to it. Maybe about five, five we, and change, I guess. Five and change, that, yeah. I, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to some of my board members and uh, with other law enforcement uh, groups that we were trying to get someone to put legislation in. We're so sure that he's going to win by landslide, Donald Trump, is that we're trying to have somebody put in legislation to extend term limits. You know, <laughs> you know so. well, that that would require a constitutional amendment. I, I think uh, <laughs> I know uh, you should finish this term and finish the next after that. And, and then come 2024, uh, I think uh, Nikki Haley could make a great president of the United States. That's I right. think Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, could make a great president of the United States. Uh, so right. that other people can step in. But I, 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 I believe the president, President uh, Donald J. Trump should be reelected. I really hope he fixes the situation with Syria and ISIS and all that. Which I'm uh, that's, yes, that's a, a I don't big, think that was handled very well. Yeah, he's got. Um, and yeah. Yeah, let's continue the economic growth. Let's let's keep unemployment down at uh, you know three and a half percent and uh, lowest unemployment for blacks, Hispanics, and, and other folks, and lowest for women in sixty five years. Uh, that's all good. That's great stuff, and that needs to continue. And if not, accelerate. yeah, and and just written the Wall Street Journal just uh, just saw something that was nice. The uh, it mentions that the black. Uh, Popular vote is uh, is really leaning towards uh, Donald Trump, you know. So, well, I, I don't know if he's going to get fifty percent of the black vote. I'd be surprised. But what's very important to remember is that it's not important. I, I have this. I've had this conversation with GOP strategists and campaign yeah. managers and candidates for many years, and they would say, "Oh, we're never going to win the black vote." Listen, you're not going to win the black vote. You're not going to get get hundred percent of the black vote. You're not going to get eighty. You're probably yeah. not going to get fifty. Not even forty. But if you can get 15 to 20% of the black vote, Correct. it's good night, Irene, for the Democrats. I tell people, uh, Republican candidates and campaign managers and so on, uh, go knock on 10 black doors, 10 doors in a, mm. in a black neighborhood. Expect and stipulate that 8 out of 10 of them will say, get off my porch, whitey, if you're white. Oh. But if 2 out of 10 say, thank you very much for asking, I'll vote for you on Tuesday, you yeah. win the election, 
hands down. Yeah. Because if you take 20% of the, uh, of the black vote away from the Democrats, uh, that's just a huge chunk out of their base and the, the entire tree falls over. Yeah. So that would be the focus. How do we find those two out of 10 black folks who will vote Republican, identify them, contact them, thank them for their interest, ask them what they need, ask them what they like, yeah. make sure they get to the polls, thank them for that. And you do that and Republican, not just Trump, but Republican candidates win comfortably across the board. I don't know what it's going to take to get them to focus on this and understand this and not whine that they're not going to get 100% of the black vote. They don't get 100% of the even right. white evangelical vote, for God's sake. Um, so I don't know why they think, they think they're going to get 100% of the black vote. Focus on the 20% and beautiful things will follow. I really wish they'd learned that lesson. Great. Uh, very good. Uh, you stay longer than you, you, you uh, than I, I thought you would. I'm glad to have you well, on this thing. this. You know, and uh, <laughs> folks, uh, my guest, of course, is uh, you, you'll see him on in all the other talk shows. He's a great political analysis, which you could just just see. Uh, Roy Murdoch, thank you for being on Streetwise. And, uh, and very much folks, thank you. Thank you hear that? Twenty percent. That's all. Look towards twenty percent of the African American mm -hmm. support. If we get that's it. Yeah. Okay. Good talking to you, Deroy Murdoch. Okay. Thanks very much. Take care now. We'll Good talk night. to you again, I hope, in the future. You bet. Bye God bye. bless and stay well. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad he came on. He's a great guest. So, uh, and it, it, as they say, uh, he tells it like it is. So, and I'm glad to hear that. I, I, I got to leave you folks. There was so much I wanted to talk about criticizing uh, the uh, city of New York, the uh, people that are running the city of New York, the mayor. Uh, Al Sharpton and then the whole thing with Rikers Island and uh, where crime is down, folks. Do you believe crime is down in New York City? How, crime is down, but shootings are up. What is that? Since, since when the shootings are not a crime, folks? And all these senior citizens that are getting sucker punched, they're making it assault, folks. Don't, don't listen to the stats, even the police department, because they have to. they got to follow orders. It's attempted murder, folks. When you punch an 85-year-old lady in the face, she hits her head on the sidewalk, she gets a fractured skull, you want to call that assault? On paper, when a guy goes to court, oh, it's an assault, what's the big deal? Let him out there. Let him low bail or maybe uh, whatever. So they're playing with the crime stats in New York. I want you to know that. And, uh, and every week now, we're, 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 giving, we're giving competition to Baltimore, Detroit, in uh, Chicago, we're going to reach them soon as far as shootings and people being shot unless we bring back stop and frisk from New York City Police Department, New York City. Folks, good talking to you. I'll see you on Strong Island TV here at Paradise Studio, Lou Talano, and I'll catch you later.